In Tesla's Q2 earnings call, Elon Musk dropped this little bombshell. Um, our solar is now 30% cheaper than the US average. After the federal, federal tax credit, uh, Tesla solar now costs $1.49 per watt. I haven't seen this spoken about much online, but it's a pretty big deal. Why? Well, let's get into it. I'm Matt Farrell. Welcome to Undecided. There were several things that came up during Tesla's Q2 earnings call that really piqued my interest. And what they brought up about Tesla's energy solar panel cost is just one of them. Now, I'm planning on diving into other points from that call in future videos, so be sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss those. But back to the cost of solar. In the United States, depending on where you live, the average cost of getting solar ranges between $2.51 and $3.31 per watt before the federal tax credit incentive. So an average size installation would cost you between $15,000 and $20,000 before incentives, or between $11,000 and $15,000 after the incentives. Now, when I got my solar panels installed in 2018, it cost me $3.12 per watt before any kind of solar incentives. Now, after incentives, it was about $2.18 per watt, including the federal and local incentives. So when Elon said the following, it really caught my attention. Uh, we recently adjusted the pricing of our retrofit solar. Uh, so Tesla Solar is the lowest cost solar in the United States. Uh, and we added a lowest, lowest cost guarantee and a money back guarantee. So we're very confident that people will, will have our solar product, whether it's the solar retrofit or solar roof. Um, our solar is now 30% cheaper than the US average. After the federal, federal tax credit, uh, Tesla Solar now costs $1.49 per watt. If we follow Elon's math, he's setting a national average cost per watt of about $2.88, which is right in that 251 to 331 range I mentioned earlier. Now, before incentives, that means Tesla Solar is right around $2, or $2.01 to be precise. Now, to get down to $149 per watt after incentives is kind of mind blowing for the US market which has been notoriously expensive compared to other countries around the world. And speaking of around the world, I've heard from a lot of viewers in Australia questioning the crazy price that I paid for my system compared to what they're paying. And it is kind of crazy how big the price gap is. In Australia right now, it's not unheard of to have a price below $1 per watt, which raises the question, why is it so much cheaper in Australia? Or to pose it in the inverse, why is it so much more expensive here in the US? There's actually a lot we can learn from Australia on this topic, especially when it comes to soft costs of installation, which refers to the non-component costs of the system, like permits and inspections. These can have a profound impact on final costs. In fact, they can often add up to about a dollar per watt for every installation. That's one of the ways Australia drove down the prices. They simplified permitting requirements and hired dedicated inspectors. Now, meanwhile, here in the US, permitting requirements vary not only by state, but often by local jurisdictions within states. And instead of having dedicated solar inspectors, we're lumping that into the realm of home inspectors in general. Those are just some of the reasons why we see such wild variation in per watt pricing across the US. One of the ways that Tesla achieved these incredible industry leading prices is by reducing those soft costs. They've simplified the sales and installation process. Instead of having a huge sales force that adds to the per watt fees, it's all done online through a simple web form. I ran through this process to see what a system would cost me today and it's impressive. Tesla has pre-configured system sizes, kind of like small, medium, large, and extra large sizing. It's another way to keep those prices down. So I wasn't able to configure a one-to-one -one match with my current 9.49 kilowatt system, but I was able to configure an 8.16 kilowatt system, which is their medium size, and it costs $16,400 up front. There's that $2.01 per watt pricing that I mentioned before. Now, if you account for the incentives in my area and the federal solar tax credit that's still available, I'll be able to get about $5,264 back for the final cost of $11,136. That makes for an even better price per watt than what Elon said on the Q2 call. It's just $1.36 per watt. And in my area, there's something called the Smart Solar Incentive, which is a series of payouts for my electric utility, Eversource. Now, over the course of 10 years, it would add up to about $2,852 cash back. Now, if you take that into account as part of this, you're then talking about a system that would cost me $8,284, or about $1.02 per watt, much lower than the actual $2.18 I paid for my current system in 2018. Now, I don't have regrets. I'm glad I didn't wait, but that's a pretty sizable difference and not so far off from Australia anymore for cost. 
In Tesla's Q3 earnings call from last year, they actually spoke about this streamlined permitting and installation process. On solar, we've also simplified the fulfillment process with a goal of really fast order to install timelines. Uh, we've, done, we've done many uh, residential installs with a single visit to a customer's home because of standard sizes that reduce complexity. Uh, we've also been working with cities and counties to submit generic permits that follow a template rather than customizing for every situation. This is a really big deal. By working with cities and counties like that to reduce complex paperwork, which in some circumstances is multiple forms and pages and pages of documents, they're reducing the overhead. It's making something that could take days to fill out and process and boils it down to a single generic form that makes for faster approval. Or as Elon put it, We've pioneered a novel approach. Um, it's sort of innovation applied to, bu uh, to bureaucracy, frankly. This type of innovation might not be as exciting and visceral as a Model S in launch mode, but it's just as game-changing as what Tesla has done with their electric vehicles. They're rethinking the whole way the solar market has worked historically here in the US. It's helping to push the prices down to a point that will make it more feasible to more areas of the country, even without incentives. And Tesla Energy is also providing energy storage to help manage the load that renewables put onto the grid or your home. Solar and wind don't always generate electricity at the times that you need it most. So we need to be able to store it. Most headlines that involve Tesla are about their cars. And most analysts seem laser focused on the car side of the business without taking the energy side into account in the same way. Elon's said numerous times that he thinks the energy side of the business is going to be big, maybe even bigger than the car side. I can't emphasize enough. I think long-term Tesla Energy will be the, roughly the same size as Tesla Automotive. Uh, I mean, the energy business collectively is bigger than the automotive business. So you say, like, you know, how, how big is the energy sector? It's bigger than automotive. To that point, Tesla just won a major project for 800 megawatt hours of megapacks for Switch in Nevada. It's one of the largest of its size. And last month, they announced a project in California for a 400 megawatt hour battery system. NRG Energy switched from installing a gas-fired peaker plant, which only runs when demand is high, to installing a solar panel system with energy storage. And then there's the AutoBidder software platform, which Tesla can layer onto any energy storage system like these to add even more value. In the UK, Photowatio Renewable Ventures and Harmony Energy are installing a 15 megawatt hour megapack system that will offset peak demand on the UK national grid. It's going to be using AutoBidder to automate how the system stores and sells energy. And getting into AutoBidder might be a whole video by itself, but it basically takes wholesale energy market pricing, energy use, renewable generation, pretty much any assets the utility wants and needs to track to determine how to best utilize the battery storage system on the fly. Now it can save massive amounts of money for the utility, and you only have to look at the success of the Hornsdale Power Reserve to see exactly how beneficial it can be. It costs around $50 million to build, but reduced the cost of frequency-controlled ancillary services by about $116 million in 2019 alone. So Tesla Energy is successfully driving down per watt pricing for solar, which will help it get more traction in the market. More people will be able to afford solar and see a return on investment faster. And I haven't even mentioned Tesla's solar roof, which offers an even better value for the dollar if you need to replace your roof at the same time as adding solar. They're closing more and more deals on mega packs to help utilities balance power demands and take advantage of increased renewables on the grid. Tesla Energy has been very quiet over the past few years, slowly reworking itself in the background as its flashier sibling basks in the limelight. But it's starting to look like Tesla Energy is standing up and demanding some attention now. And that's pretty exciting. Not just for Tesla, but for the broader solar energy market too. So what's your take? Jump into the comments and let me know what you think about Tesla's plans for the energy side of the business. And as always, a special thank you to all of my patrons. All of your support is really helping to make this possible. If you like this video, be sure to check out the other ones I have linked to right here. And be sure to subscribe if you think I've earned it. And as always, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.